The Mandelbrot set is one of the most well-known fractals. Bifurcation diagrams also have fractal behavior, and if you've heard of them, chances are you're most familiar with this one, the bifurcation diagram for the logistic map. Are these two fractals related? This animation provides some clues, but it's a little misleading when presented out of context. Let's figure out what exactly is going on here, but first let's recap bifurcation diagrams and the Mandelbrot set. A bifurcation diagram is a plot that helps you understand the behavior of an iterated function. So first, let's pick a function to iterate, say the logistic map. R is a variable. Let's set it to 3.9 for now. When we iterate a function, we need to choose an initial value. So let's go with x0 equals 0 0.5. We plug that into the map, and we get x1 equals 0 0.975. We plug that back into the map, and we get x2 equals that, and so on. These are the iterates. The important thing here is that we can still change this r value and see how the iterates change behavior. So what if we want to see the behavior for multiple r values at once? Let's try having multiple number lines and assign them each an r value. Great. Now, instead of labeling each number line, let's draw an r-axis instead. And we don't need all these vertical number lines, let's just use one, keeping in mind that the iterates generated from each of these points will essentially bounce up and down vertically. Let's add more points, too. Now we're getting somewhere. This is the bifurcation diagram for the logistic map. Well, most of it anyway, the r-axis ranges from 0 to 4 here, but really it can go from negative 2 to 4. For r-values outside of these bounds, the iterates diverge to infinity. If you're curious, my previous video has more on bifurcation diagrams. Now on to the Mandelbrot set. The Mandelbrot set also involves a map, the quadratic map. We can iterate just like we did before, and this time we call our input c, but it has the same function as r for the logistic map. The distinction now is that we can allow our c value to be complex. When c is complex, you can see the iterates move off of the real line. Let's connect successive iterates with lines so that we can keep track of what's going on. For some values of c, the iterates diverge. For the quadratic map in particular, it is known that if an iterate lands outside this circle, then the next iterate in the sequence will only move farther away, and so on. So if we see that happen, we can just stop iterating there, because we know the iterates are diverging. Like before, we can move C around and see how the iterates are affected. In the interest of getting to the point, here's the Mandelbrot set, and here's how it works. We take an input C value, and we'll try to iterate it 1,000 times. If the iterates exit the circle, then we stop iterating and assign that C value a color based on this color palette. By the way, for the quadratic map, Z1 happens to always equal our input C. So for this input C value, we made it one iteration before we left the circle. So this point is assigned this purple color. As we move C, we come across this region where it takes two iterations before the iterates escape, so that region gets a different color. The next region takes three iterations and gets another color, and so on. At this C value, the iterates take 999 steps before they exit. Side note, notice that this looks suspiciously like pi. There's a very interesting video about that on number file. Anyway, we move C a little bit more, and now we successfully got through 1,000 iterations without exiting the circle. So we conclude that this C value is within the Mandelbrot set, and we color it black. All the black points correspond to a C value, whose iterates never leave the circle. This type of fractal is called an escape time fractal, because it's colored based on how long it takes the sequence to escape the circle. And that brings us to this animation. 
It was made by Johnny Hyman specifically for this Veritasium video about the logistic map. If you've seen this animation, you probably saw it in that video, though it is currently in the Wikipedia page for the Mandelbrot set as well. The Python code to generate this animation is actually on GitHub. Link in the description. So, clearly, there's some way to combine the Mandelbrot set and the bifurcation diagram. Let's try to figure out exactly what's being plotted here. We know that we're going to end up with some sort of 3D bifurcation diagram, so let's start with the same place as we did with the 2D version, and then add another dimension. Instead of a row of points, we're going to need a plane of points. Let's start by looking at just one point first, though, so we can see what to expect. This is c equals negative 1.7 plus 0i. Since we are iterating on the quadratic map, our z0 will equal 0, so our point here is at a height of 0. By the way, there is a good reason why we start iterating the quadratic map at 0 and the logistic map at 0 0.5, and I'd like to talk about that in a future video, but the short version is that they're extrema for each of those maps. 0 is a minimum for the quadratic map, and 0 0.5 is a maximum for the logistic map. Anyway, once again, we'll plot the iterates along the same vertical axis as our c value. Looks good so far, nothing weird here. Let's try a different point. Okay, we've run into a problem. The next iterate in the sequence is complex, and we can't plot that on a one-dimensional line. We're going to have to compromise by plotting just the real part of the iterates. With that in mind, let's return to our plane of points and iterate them all. Looks like we're getting somewhere, but first let's take a step back. We made a choice to plot just the real part of the iterates, so we should separately plot the imaginary part as well. This is the real and imaginary parts of the 3D bifurcation diagram for the quadratic map. As expected, they look like the Mandelbrot set from above. All the C values that generated iterates that diverged are not plotted, which corresponds to the colored parts of the escape time fractal. We can also just look at the columns along the real line of the C-plane. This is the 2D bifurcation diagram for the quadratic map. Since the inputs are all real, the imaginary part of the 3D bifurcation diagram is always zero along the real line. Let's take a step back and recap what we know so far. If we take the logistic map and look at the bifurcation diagram, which has a real input, we get this. If we take the quadratic map and look at the escape time fractal, which has a complex input, we get the Mandelbrot set. The real part of the 3D bifurcation diagram for the quadratic map looks like this, and then we also have the imaginary part. Now let's try to fill in those blanks. If we take the 3D bifurcation diagrams and limit them to only real inputs, we get these, which allows us to see the hidden 2D bifurcation diagram for the quadratic map. On the other hand, we know that the 3D bifurcation diagram for the logistic map will contain its 2D version, and the imaginary part will be zero for real inputs. Now let's go ahead and see what the escape time fractal for the logistic map looks like. So here we use r instead of c, and our z0 is 0 0.5. Unlike the quadratic map, our input is not the same as z1. In fact, we can even move the input outside of the bailout circle, and the iterates remain bounded. Here's the fractal. Now we can fill in that blank. Just at a glance, it seems promising. Notice how the chaotic area of this bifurcation diagram corresponds to the needle of the Mandelbrot set. The logistic map has two areas with chaotic behavior, and the escape time fractal has two needles. Now to fill in the last few blanks. As expected, the 3D bifurcation diagram for the logistic map matches the escape time fractal. When viewed from the side, you can easily see the chaotic parts of the 2D bifurcation diagram. And here's the matching imaginary part. 
Now we can complete our table. So, to answer the question in the video's title, is the logistic map hidden in the Mandelbrot set? No, not at all. They're completely separate maps. But they do have at least one thing in common. Looking at the bifurcation diagram for the logistic map, we can mark the R values where bifurcations occur. Then we can measure the length between successive bifurcations. Now we take the ratio of successive lengths, so we have L1 divided by L2, and so on. The ratios approach a number, and that number is the Feigenbaum constant. We can do the same thing for the other side of the logistic map bifurcation diagram, and we get the same result. We can do the same for the quadratic map, and we get the same thing. So what's the deal? Does this work for every bifurcation diagram? It works on the sine map, but it doesn't work on the 10 map, nor the Gauss map, nor the circle map. So which functions does it apply to? Well, the specifics are kind of complicated, but the basic idea is that it works for maps with a certain kind of hump. The formal terminology is that the Feigenbaum constant is universal for all maps that have a single locally quadratic maximum. You can get more specific than that, but that's outside the scope of this video. I'll leave some links in the description, though. So, does that mean that these four maps have their own Feigenbaum constants? Presumably, yes, but I don't know what they are. These constants are not easy to calculate by brute force from just a bifurcation diagram. You need to know exactly where the bifurcations occur to a very high degree of precision. To my surprise, I can't find what those other constants are online either. The Feigenbaum constant applies to a large family of maps, but there are other families of maps, so where are the other constants? Well, I'm not a mathematician, so I don't know. Anyway, in conclusion, no. The logistic map is not hiding in the Mandelbrot set, but it's definitely related since they're both quadratic functions. I hope you enjoyed the video. I look forward to making more.